Hello viewers, welcome to another Teardown from Dexter's Lab 2013. Uh, before I start, I'll just mention that I'm not filming this in ideal conditions. Uh, my apologies if the colour balance and lighting is all a bit wonky. This should be quite a special teardown, as this kind of item is particularly rare to find and, and indeed deal with, as it weighs probably a couple of hundred kilos. So, we have this amazing looking and rather enormous Hitachi S800 scanning electron microscope, or SEM, for teardown. I picked this up a few weeks ago with the help of Carl from Carl's Tech Shed. Uh, this microscope has already been discussed a bit on the EV blog forum, so I do know that uh, a few of you already know some details about this teardown, but for those who don't, this is an S800 model SEM made by Hitachi. It dates from 1988. It's not working because it's missing quite a lot. Uh, now, I believe the S800 was manufactured from around about 1983. I'm not quite sure when they stopped production of it. Uh, maybe probably getting on into the 1990s where they start bringing out uh, better models. So this probably had quite a few years in production. I believe they are quite a common um, electron microscope. They do seem to be quite popular if you start looking around. Now, as I said, this is missing quite a bit. Um, the biggest, mo most notable thing is the main control desk and console. Uh, this contained the viewing monitors and the operator controls, displays and the control electronics, part of the vacuum and high voltage generation system. Uh, but sadly, it was scrapped before I bought this part. So we have only this bit remaining. And that renders this part pretty much useless. And to be honest, um, this could well have faults. So this part here is called the main console. Uh, it's the actual science element of it, but it too is missing components. Um, at least the uh, specimen table with the hand controls to move the specimen around inside the chamber. For those of you who are not really up to speed on what an electron microscope is, um, it's a microscope that instead of using an optical system to magnify um, what you're looking at, it uses a beam of electrons which allows much higher magnification than any kind of optical device. You generate um, electrons using an electron gun, very similar to the one that you'd find in an old CRT. Uh, just like the CRT, you need to focus and, and accelerate those electrons and aim them at the thing you want to look at using electromagnets and high voltage. If you arrange it so you can scan the beam of electrons over the subject, when this beam hits the subject, it promotes it to release additional electrons. Um, these can be collected by a detector and turned into an electrical signal, which can then be displayed on a CRT in sync with the beam. Um, or alternatively, you can digitize them and do the whole thing digitally. And of course, to do all of this, the electron gun and the sample have to be under high vacuum uh, because you can't chooch electrons in air. Um, this all means that you also need a high vacuum system uh, as well as everything else, uh, which would typically be made up of a roughing pump to evacuate the bulk of the air from the system uh, and then a further pump like a turbo molecular pump or a diffusion pump and possibly additional pumps like ion pumps. This brings the vacuum down to around 10 to the minus 7 torr. Uh, you also need high voltage for chooching the electron pixies around. Now, as always with things like this, the principles of operation and the actual reality of a commercial product are often very different, and that's why things like this get more and more comp complex. As manufacturers refine and improve what might be a basic idea into something that actually does the job accurately and reliably, um, now, before we get started, there are a few things I want to say about this. Things like this get scrapped all of the time, so don't beat me up scrapping this a bit of beautiful science. It's completely non-functional, uh, but with a bit of careful disassembly, we can save parts that are in this for others to use rather than just sending the whole lot to the scrap metal pile, which is where it would have ended up if I hadn't have bought it. I will be removing many of the components from the base of this unit. Um, I'll be removing the electron gun and the column assembly from the sample chamber, which is here, um, and the ion pumps, which this contains. 
So it will end up with the chassis, the main vacuum pump, which is down in, in there, uh, the sample chamber, uh, which will all go up on eBay as a whole. Um, it could make a perfect starting point for someone wanting to get into high vacuum, uh, but it will be still quite big and heavy. If nobody is willing to buy it in that form, then the diffusion pump will be removed and sold separately on eBay to cover my costs. Uh, of buying this and shipping it to me. After that, I have decided the remaining useful items will be given away free to anybody who has a use for them. So if you see anything in here that you can make use of, um, then please get in contact me, we, with me on the EEV blog forum and we can work out postage costs. Uh, there'll be a link to the threads on the EEV blog forum in the video description. I should point out that so far, the two small ion pumps, the electron gun assembly, uh, and the secondary electron detector have already been claimed and will be heading off to the new owners once they've been removed. Right, so let's get started. Uh, let's start at the top. What I'm gonna do is quickly describe each component working downwards. Um, later in the disassembly, probably in another video, I will go into more detail about each of the items. This cylinder is the electron gun and column assembly. Uh, this contains the main electron gun, uh, beam control, focusing uh, and the scanning coils. Uh, attached to the back are three ion pumps underneath these covers. Uh, these allow you to pump the three main chambers inside the column down to a very high vacuum. So uh, let's uh, take off uh, these covers. They're actually not screwed into place because I've had them off before. So I'll just remove these out of the way. I'll move the camera around and you can see them in a bit more detail. Oh, before I get started, I'm just gonna take off my watch uh, because these ion pumps, um, these parts here, are huge great big magnets so I don't want them screwing up my watch. So right at the top here we have uh, this large ion pump uh, with two large magnets on the outside and we have two smaller ion pumps um, that evacuate the two chambers in the final two stages of the column um, and they're obviously all connected with these beautiful stainless steel pipes and fittings this device on the side is for electron beam monitoring and there is a small detector box attached to it. This seems to be some kind of pneumatic device. There's some little air pipes just here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this is for, but I think it might be some kind of valve to close off the column from the sample chamber. We should know a little bit more when I actually take this to pieces. Uh, the next part down is the sample chamber. Uh, this is where the specimen is placed on a multi-axis table that fits in the front of this opening. It is missing and it would have a number of hand controls on to allow you to rotate and move the sample around inside the chamber. If we just take a look at the sample chamber now, uh, we have this device on the outside. Uh, this connects through onto the inside. I'll show you what's on the inside in just a moment. Um, this is a small dewer. Um, it's normally filled with liquid nitrogen. Um, there is a copper bar which runs all the way through into the sample chamber and connects to a copper plate and that is acting as a chiller. Inside we have the point where the electrons are actually emitted. Um, this is the copper plate that I just mentioned. You can also see a cheap arsed MES light bulb in the back there to provide a bit of light inside the chamber. It's a bit surprising they used something so cheap. We also have this control, which is for adjusting the aperture of the objective lens. Uh, this controls the overall size of the final electron beam, and it's operated by a small hand control um, on the outside here. Just here, we have a port on the sample chamber, which connects up to the um, ion pumps. I'm not really sure what that is there for. Um, hope maybe um, some, we'll get some answers when we start taking things apart a bit further. Or if anybody has any idea why the ion pumps have a separate 
um, feed up to them. Um, they, can you leave those in the comments? Because I have no idea. Um, the uh, ion pumps do seem to be um, separate uh, in terms of the vacuum from the rest of the system. So I'm not quite sure why or how that is possible. But if anybody knows, uh, please let me know. Uh, this aperture here in the sample chamber is the um, SEC, which is the sample exchange chamber. Um, this is effectively an airlock. Um, there's a small door here uh, which allows you to open and then gives you access to a secondary vacuum chamber on the outside. I'll show you that in just a moment uh, to allow you to easily exchange the sample that's inside the chamber without losing all of your vacuum. So well, there's a small airlock system here. And on the other side of the sample chamber, we have this device here. That is the secondary electron detector, I believe. Uh, next round, we have this device here, and I believe that is the X-ray detector. Um, the electron detector there can actually be moved in and out with a control uh, just here. So uh, that can be moved into position from the outside. So just to give you a slightly better view of those items I've just shown you, we have the liquid nitrogen dewer. Um, this is the X-ray detector. This is the uh, secondary electron detector. And we have that adjustment on the, on the end there to adjust its position. Um, this is the beam control knob with its uh, adjustment. Um, there is also some kind of electronic box on top of that. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe we'll find out later. And on the other side, we have that sample exchange chamber. So this is a separate um, chamber which has a partial vacuum on it. Um, this has a little window in um, and this control knob. So presumably you can attach a sample onto the end here. Um, it would probably be mounted on some kind of um, little table or something that can be inserted into and then attached to the actual sample chamber on the inside um, once you've opened the little airlock. Um, this doesn't have any bolts or anything to secure it into place. Um, there's just a, a gasket round, I suspect it's just pushed up and then the vacuum um, system itself pulls it tight and makes the seal. And this is the piping that I mentioned before that connects the sample chamber to the ion pumps. There's a valve here, uh, and then each ion pump has its own valve as well. And if we have a look at the base part, uh, this is the front panel. Um, these seem to control the vacuum side of it. Uh, I think everything else would have been done on that console that we're missing. Uh, so we have uh, a number of things, that e evac power, so that would be the main power for the uh, vacuum system. Uh, we have ion pump one, two, and three. Uh, a gauge there displays as uh, ion pump vacuum and a uh, number of selection switches there. We also have a kilovolt um, thing here. I'm not quite sure what that means, but it's also related to the pressure. So uh, we have times one, times 10 to the three, 10 to the four, five, six, and then finally 10 to the seven tor. Uh, next along, we have the um, SC vacuum, that is sample chamber. Uh, we also have uh, a separate gauge for the SEC, which is the sample exchange chamber. Uh, so presumably you can switch between the different pressure gauges that are in this, or vacuum gauges, I should call them, um, to see what the different pressures are. Uh, we have a number of LEDs, status lights, presumably error lights as well, and a few little odd um, SC airlock valve. Uh, we also have a specimen stage lock uh, switch here. Um, in the back of the sample chamber, there is a, seems to be a pneumatic piston. And I think what that does is to actually lock the uh, specimen stage into place to prevent it moving. Uh, presumably you need to do that at the highest magnifications to make sure that the sample stays extremely still. Okay, I'm just gonna go handheld for this bit. Uh, we'll have a look in the base of the uh, this main unit uh, so we have a circuit board there we'll look at that in a bit more detail later um, around the side we can start to see a bit more detail inside here um, this box was just laying in the middle of everything it wasn't secured to anything 
Not entirely sure what that is for. We should find out in the future. Um, so underneath here, we have the main vacuum pump. This is a large diffusion pump with a water cooling jacket on it. This part here is a baffle and that um, prevents any of the uh, vaporized oil from the diffusion pump passing up into the sample chamber. I'm not quite sure what this big bit is here. I think it's just more part of this um, just to stop oil getting up into the sample chamber. Uh, there's a number of bits on here. It's a bit hard to see exactly what they are until all this comes out or at least get some more of this off. Um, there's random pipes all over this place and I'm not entirely sure what they're for. That's been obviously hasn't been tightened up in a long time. There's uh, a number of gauges. I think that's a Pirani gauge just up here. Um, this looks like it's some kind of switching valve. Uh, there is also a small uh, micro switch attached to the top of it. Over in the back there, these bits here. This is part of the sample exchange chamber vacuum system. Um, so there's uh, two pipes that run out to the back here. I think the actual main console, the, the control console, sorry, would have had um, at least one roughing pump, possibly two. So I think what they used was uh, a roughing pump for the main chamber and then possibly a separate one for the sample exchange chamber. Um, I don't believe the sample exchange chamber is brought down to full vacuum, apart from when the door is actually, the airlock door is open. Um, I think it's just brought down to a, a moderately low pressure. Um, so I think there might be a separate feed off there to a, another roughing pump. Um, down in here we have a transformer, um, a load of wiring and stuff in there. This uh, looks like it's a power supply for running the um, control logic. I'm not 100% on that, but it does appear to be a power supply. There's some piping and switching valves just in there. And a few more over in the back. And as you can see um, inside this uh, frame, uh, there's some rather substantial mounts. Let's just turn the brightness up there for you. I mean that's uh, getting on for 10 mil thick steel and on top of that there's a rubber a rubber vibration mount. Over on the back here uh, we've got uh, a slightly better view of those uh, valves and controls. We have these two vacuum ports uh, so one is for the main chamber and one is for the sample exchange chamber. These two pipes here which have been cut would have been the water cooling pipes for the diffusion pump. And we've got a number of sockets and connections there for all the electrical stuff. We have uh, this bit of polystyrene, some kind of container for something, I'm not entirely sure, maybe something to do with liquid nitrogen. Um, that was this this pipe sort of pointed into it, but it's not uh, securely attached to anything, so I'm not sure what that was for. Um, just on the inside there, we've got a number of uh, high high voltage devices. I think they might be power supplies for the penning gauge, uh, the penning vacuum gauge. Um, and there's a number of relays just here. Interestingly, these are all open, don't have any sort of frame or anything on them. So um, I'm not quite sure what voltage they're switching, but uh, you don't probably don't want to put, stick your hands in here when it's uh, switched on. You can see there the uh, diffusion pump. So that is a Dyer uh, diffusion pump model DPF4Z. Um, ultimate pressure. 10 to the minus 7 tor and it's 500 watts made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. In fact, most of the things on here um, seem to have a, a made in Japan sticker on them. 
and the underneath there. I think that uh, white thing with the high voltage written on it, just up there. I believe that is the uh, penning gauge. Okay, what I want to do in the remainder of this video is remove these ion pumps. Um, the, this big one weighs at least 23 kilos. Um, these ones are probably uh, about half that. So I want to get these removed, uh, get a bit of weight off this. Uh, that will allow me to remove the, um, the actual electron gun and column assembly uh, because I want to take that apart separately in the lab. So here we have the uh, enormous main iron pump. We'll have a look at that in a bit more detail a bit later, but that is heavy. Must be getting, oh, I think the data sheet said 23 kilos, so. And uh, this is one of the smaller ion pumps. So there we have one of the manifold sections with all the uh, valves for the ion pumps. So uh, certainly I'll be keeping that. Uh, I'm sure that could be extremely useful to somebody. Okay, I think I've managed to remove all of the devices and bits attached to the main column. Um, there's a number of very large uh, Allen bolts that seem to bolt the whole assembly onto the sample chamber. So I'm just going to remove those now and then hopefully <laughs> I can lift this off. Right, uh, I can't seem to get this off. Uh, I'm not quite sure what is holding it in. It's definitely loose, um, but it just doesn't want to come off. So I'm not entirely sure what I can do now. And I have seen there's a couple of, uh, well, there's one, two, three, probably four or five um, set screw Allen bolt things on this. So I'm just gonna try slackening those off just to see whether that does anything. Now what I want to do before I actually remove this completely is just to see how heavy it is because <laughs> I don't want to end up picking this up and then having to drop it. So. Right, that is about all I've got time for in this part. Um, I've just got the main um, column off and uh, the next step is to remove more of this and have a look at the column and everything else underneath. There's actually quite a bit, isn't there? So I will see you in part two. Bye for now. <laughs>